Hello students, welcome back to the third video of Towns Traders and Craftsperson. Here in this video we are going to talk in detail about the trading communities which emerged during the medieval time period. So let's begin with the first that is Banjaras or horse traders formed association with the headmen who negotiated on their behalf with warriors or bought horses. So Banjaras what they did they used to trade in uh, animals like horses they used to sell it they negotiate and increase or decrease the amount and sell it to the headmen. Then you have Manigramam or Nana Desi formed guilds which traded extensively within the peninsula and with the Southeast Asia and China. So these are the people who basically worked in Southeast Asia and peninsula areas. Chettis, Marwaris, Oswal and Gujarati traders. These are the traders who basically did business in textile spices in different parts of the world like Red Sea, Persian Gulf, East Africa, Southeast Asia, China. Even they bought gold, ivory, spices, tin okay? and Chinese blue pottery in exchange. So import export used to take place. Uh, they were Chettiars, Marwaris, Rajasthanis, Oswal and Gujarati traders who were basically best in their business field. Then we had the other community, Arabs, Persian, Chinese, Jewish, Syrian, Christian traders. They were good in uh, selling spices, cotton cloth to the Italian traders from where it reached the European countries. Okay, so last one European traders. They purchased spice like pepper, dried ginger and cotton cloth from India. So these are the usual uh, men who were there in medieval time period who were basically into the trade of uh, spices you can say the first one Banjaras they were selling the horses the second is Manigram they were into the business of guilds then Chetiyars, Marwari, Oswals and Gujarati traders they were in the textile business spices and you have the gold, ivory, spices and blue pottery uh, in exchange they used to do. Then you had the Arab, Persian, Chinese, Jewish and Syrian Christians who used to trade in the business of spices and cotton cloth. And the last European traders, they were good in uh, pepper, dried ginger. Okay, they used to sell this. So let's go into the next topic that is crafts. Crafts persons of Bidar. Then you have the Panchals or the Vishwakarma community. Then you have Saliyars, the weaver community. How did the craft uh, come in and people started contributing their talent to the community. Craft persons of Bidar. Famous inlay work in copper and silver which came to be known as Bidri. Okay, people from Bidar, okay, they termed their work to be Bidri. Okay, the inlay work which they used to carve on the copper and the silver that was famously known as Bidri work. Then the Panchal community, they were good in goldsmiths, bronze smiths, blacksmiths, masons and carpenters. Even the Panchals were uh, played an important role in construction of palaces, buildings, tanks and reservoirs. Then you have the Salayars, that is the weavers who were there, okay, or they are known by Kaikolars, other name for them, worked as weavers, they were prosperous and made donations to temples. So they used to contribute donations to the temple. So these are the crafts community. First, Bida people, they used to work on the copper and the silver and the work, inlay work they used to 
do and that work used to be known as bidri whereas the panchals they were good in this two business okay they were either the goldsmiths and they used to construct palaces buildings tanks reservoirs and salaikars are the weavers they were prosperous and they used to contribute donations to the temple this is the first inlay work copper work which is being done okay like this beautiful designs they used to present on the copper silver then you have the cap, uh, smiths okay bronze smiths blacksmiths and everyone they used to work these are the salaya cars or kaikolars who used to work hard weave clothes out of cotton and they used to donate to the temple okay then this is the map talking about the famous places during medieval time period business was possible in this areas uh, one in surat hampi and masulipatnam now we'll talk about hampi okay this is the beautiful place in hampi okay which was destroyed later on but it is still famous so let's begin uh, the talk hampi was a well fortified city and the nucleus of vijayanagar empire no mortar or cementing agent when they constructed hampi there was no use of cement agent okay they used to just tuck it like that okay with the bricks which they used okay there was no cementing agent no mortar which was used in the construction of uh walls interlocking was just done with the use of the bricks and this got demolished later on in different time periods it got destroyed so this is all about the vijayanagar empire then you have this buildings okay royal buildings which are pillared with lot of uh thing okay the arch shape which you can see the dome shape on the top okay these are the niches where you have the space which has been kept for the sculpture to be kept either the murtis which are there the statues which can be put up or you have in the modern times you have the area where you can keep the flower pot right then you have here the constructional site if you can uh, see okay there are a lot of elephant structures which have been put then here you have lot of inlay designs motifs which they have used in okay so this is the construction basically one pattern is used all over then you have these are the dancers devadasis temples were central point of cultural activities as we mentioned earlier also that economical activities and cultural activities used to take place devadasis performed before the deity that is the god the statue they used to perform in front of them and the uh, masses means the people who are there okay of virupaksh which means the form of shiva temple there they used to perform their dances then you have maha navmi or navratri in gujarat a uh, navratri is been celebrated for almost 9 days okay 9 to 10 days whereas in the south side if you go visit there is maha navmi so it is again celebrated for this many days and the this festival remains similar okay so these are the cultural activities which are performed in a temple this is the view of the temple where devadasi is used to this is the central uh, point of the cultural activities wherein people come from different parts of place okay for the maharti puja and all and then you have the cultural activity which is performed we'll just brush up with all what we have done so we talked about three uh, different area that is surat hampi and masulipatnam so we are talking here about hampi 
Hampi city, okay, Hampi was well fortified city and a nucleus of Vijayanagar empire. No mortar, there was no cement agent which was used but it was just interlocking of the bricks which is uh, again time and all rainfall or the other natural disasters which took place which destroyed the temple presently. Then you have the buildings. Uh, which had a royal complex, had splendid arcs and domes which I had shown you and it had pillared halls, niches where you can store in the sculptures or the statues you can put in. Then you have the orchards and pleasure gardens where you have the different motifs which are being sculptured and kept in, lotus, corbel and all. Then you have the commerce area where the trading was possible. Okay. The Moors, Chetis, agents of European traders who traded with the Portuguese. So that is how the business of spices, cotton cloth, okay, pottery work, everything was done over here. Then culture as we mentioned, it talked about the central area that is the temple. It talked about the Devadasis who performed their dances. Then you have the Mahanaomi, uh, which is celebrated in South. Okay. Okay. How did the fall take place of Hampi? So let's talk about that. The city, which was a hub of various activities during 15th, 16th century, fell into ruin during the defeat of Vijayanagar in 1565. They were defeated by the Deccan Sultans, the five names you have to remember children over here. That is Golconda, Ahmadnagar, Berar, Bidar and Bijapur. Bidar you remember the inlay work they used to do and which was famous for Bidri. So these are the places which got destroyed uh, due to the fall of Vijayanagar in 1565. Talking about the next uh, that is Surat. So we uh, cleared off the three, talking about the first one, Hampi, Surat, Masulipatnam, we finished with Hampi. Now the second one is talking about the Surat. Why did people from distant land visited Surat? Okay, so now in detail, let's talk about the Western trade. People from distant land visited Surat because Western trade, that is Surat was emporium of Western trade. It was a gateway to West Asia via Gulf of Ormuz. The business could be done, trading was possible through the water area, okay. Gate to Mecca, many pilgrim ships set sail from Surat to Mecca. So, hundred ships used to wait for people to travel from one place to the other and as you know the business in Surat import export was possible in different uh, this thing uh, basically the uh, different forms of uh, spices which were being sold commerce as you know Surat was a cosmopolitan and people of different creeds and caste used to stay Portuguese Dutch English had their warehouses and factories over here. So, Western trade gate to Mecca, it was an area for commerce, it was an area for textile, okay. Demand for the Zari work was the maximum, demand in West Asia, Africa and Europe. People used to sell the gold laces, okay, of the Zari, which is very important and which was sold. Infrastructure, parks and rest houses were built. Then you have uh, banking which was done. Katiawad sheets and margins. Okay, they were famously doing business in this market. The Cairo, even in distant markets, Cairo which is in Egypt, Basra is in Iraq and Antwerp in Belgium, Surat, Hundis were honored. So this is how the work used to take place. You can see here, this becomes a route to visit to Mecca, okay, directly a route towards Mecca. So from Surat via Hormuz Strait, okay, then you can visit directly, the business could be done. So this is how the process used to take place. Here you can see 
from India they visited to England, Portugal, Netherlands. This is the Mahajan or the Kathiawat Shades, okay, who did the banking at Surat, and this is the document which has been presented, okay, in the name of the person promised by the Shade saying that so and so rupees have been granted 2500 only for the value received in cash, cash, and the name of the person which has been given. Reasons why it uh, went to decline, it's due to the 17th century loss of markets and productivity because of decline of Mughal Empire, okay. Then you have control of the sea routes by the Portuguese and competition from Bombay, where East India Company shifted its headquarters in 1668. So students, you all must have understood with this topic. We will meet in the next video. Till then, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.